Git has two repository types, local and remote. The local repository is on your own machine, so you have direct access to it. The remote repository is usually a centralized server and is entirely optional. We can save the changes that we made locally on this remote server. The remote repository is very useful when you want to have a backup of your data in case your computer breaks or when you're working with a team. Teammates can initialize their own local repository on their own computers and simply pull the data from the remote repository in order to start working on your project. When one of the team members has made some changes, they can push these changes to the remote repository. In order to keep your local and remote repository in sync, you can then pull these changes from the remote repository into your local repository. The local repository actually consists of three stages. The working area are all your active changes. Git doesn't know what to do with them yet, it just knows that these files contain some updates. The staging area contains new changes that will soon be committed. And then there are the committed files. Previously, we looked at the use case of Git, and we saw that people could add their change and save new states of the project each time. What we're actually looking at here are commits. People can commit their changes in order to add version control to the project. The files that should be included in the commit are first added to the staging area. A commit gets created when a developer actually commits those files. Let's initialize a local Git repository by going into our project folder and initializing Git. We can initialize Git by typing git init. In your terminal, you can see that we initialize an empty Git repository in a .git folder. When you execute the ls-a command in order to list all the contents of the folder, including hidden folders, such as the Git folder, you can see that the Git folder has been created. Later on in the course, I'll talk more about what Git actually does and the contents of the Git folder. But for now, it's just important to understand the flow of Git. Let's add a file to our project. It's going to be a simple text file with a very basic sentence. We've just made a new file and added the text, this is a beautiful story to it. I'm proud of my creation and I want to make sure that I save the current state the project is in. So I'm going to save that to my local Git repository. Now that we've added the text file, let's see if Git saw that I made a change. Although we haven't done anything with Git yet, we initialized a Git repository in this project, so Git knows all of our files and their changes. You can see the status of Git by executing the git status command. Let's see step by step what this output actually means. First, on branch master. We haven't covered branches yet. However, Git allows you to work on your code and have multiple states of your code base. Your default branch is the master branch. As we haven't made any new branches yet, we're still on the default master branch. No commits yet. Storing changes in our local Git repository is called committing. With every commit, we save the current state of the repository and show the changes that we made to it. We haven't done so yet, so there are no commits yet, as Git tells us. Untracked files. These are the files that Git knows of. However, we haven't told Git what to do with them. We haven't told it yet that we want to add it to our local repository, for example. So they're still untracked. Right now, we haven't told Git what to do with the new story1.txt file. It might be that we don't want to add that story to our local repository at all. However, I want to commit my change. Before we can commit a file, we first have to put it in the staging area. We can put it in the staging area with the git add command. You run the git add command with the files that we want to add to the staging area. 
In this case, I want to add the story onetxt file to the staging area, so I execute git add story onetxt Perfect. Now it's time to commit our change. A commit records the change of a repository compared to its previous state. In this case, we didn't have any previous commits, so the addition of the file story onetxt is a change compared to its previous state. In order to commit the files that are currently in the staging area, we run the git commit -am command with a useful message right after. The dash -am is a flag for message. When you make a commit, it's very good practice to summarize the change that you just made in a very short sentence. This way, you can easily track down when you made certain changes, and your teammates also know what you've been doing. In this case, I'm committing my first story, so I'm going to add the message added first story. We just created our very first commit. The changes have been saved and we can reset our project to this exact state at any point in the future.